Welcome to Talking Maine with the Bowtie Boy. I'm Tom Teviel, and I have my special friend and special guest, Senator Russell Black. Good morning, Tom. Glad to have you here. Well, it's great to be here. You're kind of surviving, huh? Well, we're we're in a survival mode right now, hoping to get out sometime this summer. Yeah, I know you guys have been in like till two o'clock. Well, the Senate's not too bad. Uh, the latest we've been in is one thirty, but we, you know, one week there we had three late nights. Uh, the House has been pretty slow moving their stuff through. Yeah, I mean, if people don't understand, as in the, in the legislature, you actually have to pass paper to finish up a project. So you might pass it on a vote, but it's still got to go back and forth between the House a couple yep. times and At all those times. Yeah. And you have to have it in paper. They still haven't changed that. Even though they've given everybody a computer, you still have to pass the paper. That's correct. So you make a copy of it, you run out and make copies of it and pass it out. Then you vote. And yeah. Sometimes we'd, we'd get one piece of paper, vote, and we'd sit there yeah. because the House likes to talk. We, we've had, you know, numerous times in the last couple of weeks that we've had to wait on the House for four, five, six hours. Yeah, you know. for some reason, and, you know, and, and, it, and I think you're going to attest to this, the Senate is mature about this. Yeah. Because if you're for a bill and I'm against a bill, most case, and we're in different parties, most cases we kind of shake hands, you deliver your thing, I deliver my thing, and you vote. It's, it's very seldom in the Senate that you have either side get up more than two, two floor yeah. speeches. Uh, it's going to be a very controversial, um, big bill to have anybody speak more than a couple times. And Lucy, is, you know, like you say, you know, the, the chairman of the prevailing side will enter his plea about this, you know, ought to pass. And then if, if the other parties ought not to pass, they'll, they'll uh, get up and say, this is why it shouldn't pass. And maybe, maybe one other person will, but but very short speeches. I mean, most of the people in the Senate have, uh, you know, have studied, you know, they know what's going on. We have small caucuses. We're able to, you know, before we go in on the floor, so we know what's in the bill. You know, we take time in the morning to go over the bills. We understand them. The lead or the chairman of the committee explains it to us and what it does and what it doesn't do. And, and so we're pretty well educated to the bill before we get on the uh, floor of the Senate. Yeah, see, in the House, I can remember they tried to do that, but the caucus was so big, yep. and they didn't really answer all the questions, and I'm sure it's on both sides. The thing that frustrated me on both sides is when the party that was in power at the time, which I went through both the parties in power, there was, well, it's our bill. We need to vote for it. And you said, come to say, no, I'm not voting yep. for this. It's right. stupid, or it doesn't make sense. And I made a few friends and enemies that way because <laughs> I wouldn't vote for some yep. things that I didn't agree with. Or And, and when I was there, it was very close a couple times. Yep. So it made a big difference that was there. But it, 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 you're right. It was just, you know. You I've, I've, been, I've been in the House when the queue was backed up 30 people, yeah. you know, and, and on bills. And, and some people in the House will get up and speak two or three times. Yeah. We, uh, we're starting to get a couple of them in the Senate now. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to laugh because the year that uh, as elected as a Republican that we took over and went to the Senate, the Democrats were mad, and they forgot the rules. They yeah. forgot, so they liked to debate all the time, so it dragged on a little bit. But I, when I became Speaker Pro Tem for a short period, very like two bills because Hannah Pingree, the Speaker at the time, got me off the stage. I made two, two announcements when I got up there. I said, first announcement, if you're going to stand up and say, I wasn't going to speak on this bill at all, but yeah. I decided I needed to, don't get up. Yeah. Right. And then I said, and then Mike Thibodeau, who later became Senate President, used to sit in back of me. And Mike uh, always said he wanted to be the keeper of the rope because once the bell starts to ring, you can't leave the floor of the House until you vote. That's right. And so Mike wanted to be the keeper of the rope. So I said, in my second assignment as Speaker Pro Tem, I'm making Representative Thibodeau keeper of the rope. Yeah. And so we had a roll call vote. He had to keep the rope. <laughs> <laughs> and then soon after that, Hannah suggested I might want to sit down. Yeah. Or Millie was there at the time. And, yeah, yeah. and Millie said, I think that's good for you. And I said, yeah, it's OK with me. I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, Russell, you've done pretty well. I mean, you've got six bills that you've had success with. I mean, this is a tough, tough yeah. term because a lot of there was a lot more partisanship, as I watched from the outside, uh, that was going on. That um, you know, I, you, I, I, I've got six bills passed. I've got one setting being tabled on the Senate that was unanimous bill out of committee, uh, out of, out of um, my committee. So that's the seventh bill that I got passed. Uh, but it hasn't. It's not going to be enacted unless the Senate president pulls it off the table. Um, then I've I've got two or three bills that uh, have been carried over. So. Um, a couple of them, stakeholder groups, uh, uh, to get more information on them, and IFW and 
and whatever. So, so what two committees do you sit on right now? I serve on Ag Conservation and Forestry, which I, this is my 13th year on, on wow. that, you know. Um, I've been, since uh, my second turn, I've been the lead Republican on that, on that committee. And, uh, um, and I've, this is my second term on IF&W, which I'm the lead Republican on that. So. And isn't this Landry guy the chair, House chair? Somebody by the name of Representative Scott Landry is the House chair, yeah, yeah. But we have to, you know, keep him in line yeah, you know, once in a while. Now, he does a great job. Yeah. Scott does a great job um, uh, on that committee. Uh, it's, it's great on both, both those committees, which we have a natural resource-based economy and tourism in this area. I mean, the guiding, hunting, snowmobile and ATV in sightseeing, leap peeping, whatever, and, and forest Operation, products, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, forest, this is a breadbasket for the, you know, uh, forest products uh, uh, industry, in, industry, industry. Yeah. And, and so we have good representation uh, on both those committees, uh, you know, Representative Hall and I are on the Ag Committee. That's Randy Hall from yes. East Dixfield. Yes, yep, yeah. and, um, and then Scott and I are on the IFW, so we, we have good representation for our outdoor um, industries, you know, and most of those committees, uh, those two specifically, are nonpartisan per se. Yeah, you have some Democrat yeah. Republican type stuff. It, yeah, you not. know, uh, IFW especially is is you know you you don't have many partisan issues there. It's all you know uh, you know dealing with deer, birds, and bees, yeah, and, hunting. Yeah. And, you know, uh, there's a little more partisanship, you okay. know, with, with um, um, you know. Uh, ag uh, pesticides, you know, and uh, uh, university funding and, and that kind of stuff, a little more partisan issues there that uh, uh, you can split. But we, we had a very good session, uh, very few uh, divided reports this year. And, and, and um, we worked, both committees worked, and we had the majority of our bills were un unanimous yeah, out of committee. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, we I, know, I know Scott had a few wild cards on yep. his committee, yep. and, right. and it was a little frustrated with dealing with them, but yeah. we'll, we'll have him on we, another time to talk about yeah, some Yeah, we of had this. a couple of newcomers on IF&W that um, yeah, didn't, you know, fit, you know. Yeah. They, they, were, they wanted to ban hunting, basically. And yeah, they used yep. that as a mind. Yep. Right. So you had some interesting bills. One of them dealt with a hospital. Yes. So what was going on with that bill? Well, uh, a year ago, uh, I think it was a year ago last summer, uh, we got called, Scott and I got called, and Randy got called to the hospital to talk about the severe uh, problem in an emergency room with psychiatric uh, uh, youth uh, under, the, you know, under the age of 18, and no place to put them. And they were filling up rooms, and there was no place that they could send them. And, and these uh, are kids that came in with mental health issues. Yes, and, and, and it's a, it's a, uh, a, a tremendously uh, large problem today uh, this, in, with, with the pandemic, you know, and uh, not going to school, and uh, it, it amplified it. It made it even worse. And so we, um, it, was, it was a huge blow up here a year or so ago, and uh, they had to take one of their um, uh, training rooms, beside the uh, emergency room and classrooms and put 15 beds in it Wow! to, to you know. And when I was there, when we were there, uh, the le legislative delegation was there touring the hospital, trying to understand the problems that was going on. There was a gentleman in one of the emergency rooms right by where you check in in the emergency room, one of those little cubicle rooms that you go into. It had been in there nine weeks. There was no, you know, no place to put him, no place to take him, you know. So that's the seriousness wow. of this problem. And, and there's been push on DHHS to do something about it. So and, let me just stop just for a minute yep. because when reading some of the testimony, you, either you or someone testified about a young person who got in there that beat up a nurse, basically. Yes, yeah. I mean, these are, yeah. these are kids yeah. that mom and dad can't really handle at home. They bring them to the hospital because something's got to be done, and the hospital doesn't have the mechanism to do it. And they talked about stamping on one's foot, slugging them in the mouth. Right. It was pretty nasty stuff. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And, and because they're restricted, nurses are restricted on how much they can confine them and what they can do. And it, yeah, it, yeah. One of them, one of them uh, got stove up in the face. I think another one broke its wrist. You know, got had its wrist broke. And uh, um, but very serious. And it's not just our hospital. I was getting calls from, uh, you know. 
people out of uh, Aroostook County, you know, uh, they, they heard what we were doing and they, they gave us their information statewide. It's yeah. it, a terrible problem. And uh, so I was asked by a Maine Health Organization to put this bill in. Uh, and we put it in and we had a lot of good testimony. It, it was passed out of committee. Uh, I don't think it was unanimous, but it was close. And, and, um, uh, and it got passed. Um, the, the DHHS testified against it. You know, and they yeah, did, yeah, really? Yeah. yeah I was yeah. trying to read their testimony yeah, this they, morning. They, they testified against it. They said they were already taken care of. But they've, they've said this since 2018. And, and if anybody has followed DHHS, there's serious problems because the department is too large and they don't know what they're doing. And just the, the situations they've had with the, the kids. The kids. Yeah. I mean, you, you know. And so um, we didn't take that, you know, we didn't take that as truth that they were really working on it. So this bill kind of forces them, you know, so to move it, ahead. It actually and, passes a resolve, correct? Or yeah. is it, and, and it tells them to go do this and get back yeah. to you next yeah. year right. in 2024 right. Right. Yeah. as to what they're going to do to resolve right. it. So there's still, the hospital still has the problem, but at yeah. least there's yeah. somewhat light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we're, hoping, we're hoping that somewhere along the line they convert a facility or they build a facility to handle this. Now, Longview, is it Longview? I believe so, for the uh, kids, yeah. Um, has a stigma, stigma, stigma about that, that they don't want it, they, and they can't send them there anyway. They don't get the treatment they need. Th there needs to be a facility that they can get treatment. These kids have mental health issues, and, yeah. and, and it's becoming more prevalent in our society today. And I'm it's sure huge, and yeah. COVID really aggravated it, yeah, terribly that's right. aggravated yeah. because they were yeah. all inside, yeah. cooped up, and they yeah. couldn't get out or whatever, so they... Went on, so 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 you'll back so they come in January or February and tell us what happened to that bill. That's Did right. they do yeah, what we, they we said do they were going to do? Yeah. Uh, we, we need to keep their feet to the fire. fire. Absolutely uh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. on that one. You know, and um, right now you had one about horse racing. So explain that one to me a little bit. Well, um, the horse racing uh, Scarborough Downs has has uh, closed. been closed and dissolved, and they need. Uh, and prime mutual betting and, and online betting has to be tied to a racetrack. So they need a new racetrack somewhere in southern Maine. And the reason I've got involved is I've always, e even though I don't, I'm not a racehorse yeah. better or anything like that, I support my local racehorse uh, owners and, and trainers. Uh, it's a big industry here in Franklin County, always has been. Um, huge number of racehorses in, in Franklin County. And so um, they asked me to put this bill in to give them more time to find and locate a place to put a racetrack, and then they can tie uh, the online betting and the power mutual betting to that track. And, uh, and I, mean, I mean, I had the opportunity with Mike Cushing. He was very kind to me and let me drive a horse. Is that the time that I beat you? No, no, if you remember uh, correctly. Wait, wait, wait. Well, no, no, no. The guy, the guy that was the commissioner actually declared me the winner that night. I think that was because at that time you were a, se a senior senator and I was just a lowly house member, uh -huh. and they ruled in your favor. But they ruled in my favor. Yeah. So now you're declaring <laughs> victory. So everybody knows they, they have a, a, harness, a, horse, a horseman's day. And they have Peak, a, is it Osso Peak Fair? I can't remember. It's one. It's, it's one. Way it's way over. We drove about two hour ride. We and yeah. I went over to yeah. and and uh, they let the horsemen, the people who take care of the horses, race that day. So you and I weren't head to head, and it was close. It was real close. It was real close. And, yeah. and Mike wouldn't declare a winner, so we had to have the commissioner do it. But but we did it again. Did you? Yeah. Were you with us? Or was that me? No, uh, I didn't Wood, do the one at the yeah, family Senator there. Senator Woodsum. Senator Mason, yeah. Garrett Mason, and uh, Senator Baker, yeah. I think it was the four of us that raced. We're, we're talking about um, having uh, Representative Hall challenge me to a race this fall at Family Fair. Well, I think I should be in that. I, should, I think I should be one of the, you know, as the defending champion. We'll, we'll, we'll take that under advisement. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike was great, and, yeah. and what they do is, so you know, we don't race by ourselves. Yeah. We're in a, right. in a large training sulky, if you will, and yeah. we're sitting next to each other. And and two, I two man sulky instead and, of a one yeah, man. Sulky. And, and I tell you, if 
at the experience is when they get behind the gate and they let the gate go and yeah. the horses take off. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, so it is fun. It's, it's, it's fun. Uh, to see what they do and the tra hard work that they do to get those horses to that point. Oh, yeah. And, and the, the, but again, they're, they're such an important part of our economy here yeah. and uh, to keep them supported in this thing. You know, they, they, you know, they buy local hay. They, yeah. they keep the local grain stores it's open going. and uh, veterinaries. They help yeah. to maintain the the, the uh, foundation of our ag community. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So one of the other things that's been in the news is PFAS, or the, and I can't remember what it stands for, but it's some forever yeah, chemical. Forever chemical. That it'd be the way that they've made this compound, it can't be altered, and so it was used for grease resistant and stuff like that, like in your frying pan for your Teflon, and, and they found it in the sludge, and they found it in huge numbers, and instead of waiting to see what the nation was going to do, the state of Maine decided they're going to lead since we're the only ones leading. And there were a lot of un yeah. unintended consequences with yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, PFAS uh, is in everything, you know, uh, rain gear, fire retardant, uh, um, all the food wrap that you get, like at McDonald's or something, to, to keep the grease from penetrating the uh, paper. That's all a forever chemical of some sort. And it's everywhere. And in some places, it's worse. Now, we, we've all heard about the Fairfield Center area from Hudamaki and, and Scott Paper Company down there. The sludge was dumped, and it was a huge problem. There's a very dense amount of, of, of PFAS and some High concentration. High concentration yeah. down there. Um, but what they, the legislature had a lot of new people in it, uh, uh, and they panicked. They wanted, you know, and they went out too hard, too fast. We passed a bill that you couldn't spread any of the sludge, uh, any uh, septic sludge from any town. It had to be hauled to a, a landfill and stockpile. Uh, even if it didn't have, you know, PFAS, PFAS in, in it. Yeah. A town of Wilton, prime exactly. example, no PFAS in it. But now we have to, instead of composting it and spreading it to town like we've done for 20 years and used it for uh, organic fertilizer or whatever, it, it now has to be hauled to Madison and sprayed out over the, uh, you they, know. They have the way to treat this. The stuff. way to treat it. Yeah. And, and so that's going to cost the town of Wilton, my hometown, $180,000, $200,000 a year. And uh, so we were having all these sewer departments call us. At, you know, some of them, you take like Bangalore, it's going to be, Close to a million dollars, eight, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars to haul this stuff and treat. And part of the problem was at the same time we passed this bill that you can do the sludge, we also passed a bill that bulky waste from out of state couldn't be brought in anymore because we thought we were filling up, you know, Juniper Trip Ridge or you know the landfills too fast. So they banned that bulky waste. And so that, let me explain that a little yeah, bit. There's yeah, a facility yeah. in Lewiston that would bring in construction debris from Massachusetts because Massachusetts banned it from being in their own landfills. Right. And what they would do is they would grind it up. They would recycle what could be recycled. When they first started, they didn't do that. Right. But they have done a phenomenal job of recycling it. And then what's left gets chipped into what they call fines. And the fines now go to the landfill, but it goes up to bulk sludge, all municipal sludges. Before PFAS, it would go up to bulk sludge. And so they've clamped down on that because the definition of waste used to be not used for its intended purposes. So when the construction debris came up here, it wasn't going to be used for construction, so it was a waste. However, until it was finally picked over to recycling, it didn't become a waste. The state of Maine said, no, no more, we're not doing that anymore. Right. Too bad, so sad, Massachusetts. The unintended consequences, they needed the fines to do the sludge. When we when we banned the spreading of that sludge, it concentrated the sludge to going to the landfills. If you can imagine a wet load of sludge, uh, you know, when you dump it out, it, it doesn't stack. It doesn't stack like gravel. It just spreads out, and there's no way to contain it. So they couldn't keep it contained. They didn't have enough stuff to contain it. So then they have to start hauling it to Quebec, and New Brunswick was taking it. Well, Quebec shut us off. They were, they were filling a gypsum mine up there, you know, open pit mine, and for some reason they decided to shut it off. They didn't want us, and that was, was costing more money to haul it up there. And, and New Brunswick still was taking it, but the price was going up because of the hauling, and, and there was pushback that they were going to shut us off. So we were in a serious situation, so I had a bill uh, be on the table, I hadn't, hadn't uh, uh, really 
gone forward with it. I was sitting there in the advisor's office, and um, we started having meetings with these sewer departments, and I said, well, we can use this bill title to correct this. And uh, uh, Representative Sobolewski from, from oh, uh, Phillips uh, was on the committee, and he says, Russell, he says, uh, you know, I can help you with that. I can, you know, I'm on the committee. I can, so he, he actually took the lead on that a lot. Uh, and and met with Casellas and the sewer departments and 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 it was on the committee. I presented the testimony to the committee, and uh, the committee didn't like. I had mine was open ended that you could bring in for two years any amount of of this uh, um, bulky Wasted. waste. Representative uh, Senator Carney, who's on the committee, uh, they all knew there was a problem. They'd overreached two years before, and they needed to do something. So they put an amendment on my bill saying that we could only bring in 25,000 ton per year for the two years, as long as Casella's brought down the tipping fees, and they are, and we've, we've started to do this already. Uh, I think I think it's going to happen right off because it's an emergency bill, and once it was signed, we could start on it. And uh, and the governor signed it. She was all in favor. The governor's office was in favor with it. And... Uh, uh, so that's by August or September, we'll see the tipping fees go down, start going down. We got just a two year window to get this corrected somehow. And I think what's important, a couple things, as you said it, like a town like Wilton, when they start working on this bill, I, I thought it had legs, but it was going to exempt the non detects. Yeah. Because Wilton is non detect. And there's no way that that's going to change in the waste stream unless industry comes into Wilton. Yeah. I wish we had that problem, but yeah. we don't. Yeah. Um, but they still are captured by this. Casella made a terrible presentation to the committee yeah. when they came in and showed that they were no longer going to take this because they didn't have enough to bulk the sludge up. Yeah. So I was shown the numbers by Representative uh, Maggie O'Neill, yeah. and I said, what they're saying is the excess that's coming in there, they don't have the ability to bulk right. up. They don't have enough materials to do that. But they didn't say that. They treated it like it was all the tons of sludge coming from the state of Maine. Yeah. And that's where the number of 25,000 came from, is that should be enough to bulk up this extra waste that's coming from these facilities, yeah. if I, I understand I, correctly. That's, that's exactly how I understand it. Uh, I, I presented a bill from from what I you know, was hearing, um, and uh, you know the committee decided to go with their amendment, but we we got it done. We got it done, and uh, that was a good bill. I mean, yeah, I'm good glad bill. I mean, it's, it's yeah. going to keep us goodbye because again, I think yeah. personally. They've overreacted. I mean, the, the the state that always reacts first, first. is California. Yeah. And California is sitting by waiting for Maine to do this. So we're spending millions and millions of dollars. And I don't know whether we're going to get anywhere or not. Yeah, I, I'm, we're not over the hurdle with this PFAS and, and, and stuff. I mean, uh, uh, we, you know, the detection part of it and yeah. what, what, what level what level is really bad and, 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 yeah, exactly. and, and, and uh, uh, compatible, you know, I don't think we know yet. So you, you also have one on wood boilers. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a good one for Franklin County, Maine. You yeah. know, uh, I had a constituent in uh, in uh, Chesterville cool. that had an old wood boiler that they bought years and years ago. They've got a twenty five acre wood lot behind their house, and and that's the way they were heating their home, cutting their own wood, and and saving themselves local fuel. You know, saving money, and uh, and and uh, they went. They needed to replace it, and so they went. And today, when you buy a wood boiler. They're very high tech, very efficient, non pollutant. They've, they've advanced the technology on these wood boilers. I mean, they've afterburner, you know, catalytic converter, con computer controlled, recycled. You can run them with your phone, right? Yeah, yeah, you can run them with your phone and you can check them. You know, you could be, I could be in the session down there and I can, I can look on my phone and, and tell me what my, you know, how my, and mm -hmm. you can adjust it right from your phone. So very efficient, no, very low emissions, very, you know, when you think of wood burners, sometimes you hear about complaints when we put the 300 foot yeah. setback in sometime along, it was because when they started up, they blow this whole black right. blue smoke o over on the neighbors and fill the yard. Well, nobody wants to live next to that, you know, and it's not healthy. Uh, but the new ones, are, you don't even know they're there. They're, and so... But the law was still in place, and in order for them to put a new one, one of these, they'd have to put a 40-foot, uh, I, I might not have the figures exactly right, 
smokestack up. Well, there's no way you're going to put a 40 foot smoke unless you put a tower by yeah, it, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and so they weren't able to upgrade their thing. So they came to to me and asked me if I could put a bill in to change the setback. Well, you just it was a little more complicated than that. But what we wound up getting was uh, a study, and and DEP agreed and said it was a good idea. And so they're coming back to us with, with recommendations next year, and hopefully that it's that, that will shorten up the distance that you can, can be from your neighbor, which it should be because they're, you know, and, and it's too bad because there's a lot of places you could put these, and, and you know, electricity is going to be high, uh, <clears throat> propane is high, oil's not going to get any cheaper, you know. And, <coughs> and this is using our own natural resources. It's using... You know, it's you know, if you're buying the wood, you're helping a local logger, local landowner, keep the land yeah, open. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, so uh, I think it's a win-win situation to burn our own fuels, to be yeah. self self-sufficient. You and know. the last bill, real quick, we'll talk about is the uh, public lands. Apparently, they are. Well, part we, of you and I have been, been involved there, in yeah. that a little bit, haven't yeah, we? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, you might say so. I, I had a funny when I looked up who testifies. You and Cutco. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know. yeah. It was uh, Black versus Cutco. Huh? Yeah, that was yeah. what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, and that's just making the legislature determine whether it's a substantial alteration or not. Right, and uh, and and now now we're going to you know every public lands owns six hundred fifty thousand acres, and we added we just had a ceremony. We picked up a little bit more yesterday up around Quill Hill, um, but uh, we're you know lands for main future is buying more public land all the time and uh for you know conservation and for access you know uh, um so uh, this is going to protect public land it's going to tell them that they have to come to the legislature on major alterations and get two-thirds vote which they should have done for the corridor yeah they should have done and it's just easier yeah. that way it's yeah. particularly if it's a change and yeah. i know now it's very specific in the law even though we lost the law cases is that if there's a transmission line of some kind, whether it's radio transmission or it needs a two-thirds yeah. vote, it's the right way to do it. That way yeah. the legislature decides. Yeah. Right. Russell, this is great. Yeah. You've done pretty good. And uh, I, I think, and, you know, and, I've, I've, had, I've had, I'm very happy with the, the ability I've had to get some bills through this year. Um, and and I've co-sponsors on a lot of bills that passed. Uh, yeah. People have come to me and asked me to help them get bills through, and, and we've, you know, we've uh, changed the LMF system. And we've set up peers. Land for Main Future. Yeah, Land for Main Future. We've changed the funding form of the era. Uh, we put in several bills for Sportsman Alliance of Maine and uh, and both the departments, both IFMW and and Ag Department. I've put in bills for them. Um, so we we've we've had a very Good. productive. Good. Uh, well, you come back on again, talk about Anytime, after sir. the summer, and then yep. maybe after the budget comes out, yep. we'll get you both yeah, in, I'll, Scott. To... We'll analyze the budget a little yeah, bit, and maybe I can come back on, and we can go over that a little bit. Russell Black, Senator Black. Thank Good you, Good to sir. have you here. Always the Honorable Tom Saviello. Yeah, no, no, just Tom Saviello now. <laughs> Grandpa. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Talking About.